Why did you become a recording artist? Because I couldn't see myself working no nine to five, you feel me? Like, I, it was either that or basketball, and I knew, like, a lot of motherfuckers get their dreams shattered trying to actually take basketball serious, you feel me? So it was like, man, fuck it. I'm going to do this music shit, because music's something that always been around me my whole life, you feel me? It's something I was good at at a young age, like, just rapping, you feel me? So I was like, man, fuck it. And then, on top of that, my homie uh, passed away, you feel me, at the age of 15, and that's what he wanted to do. So it was like, I'm on some shit like, I'm living his dream for him, you feel me? What was his name? His name was Tom Mirror. Mirror. You tried your hand at basketball? I mean, like, I really ain't take that shit serious because I peaked at a young age. Like, a lot of prodigies in this basketball shit, they don't even really get to make it to the point where they want to make it at. I'm like, man, I'm not about to get my feelings hurt with this shit. And what about a job? Did you ever try your hand at a job? Yeah, I worked at one job before, but it wasn't for me. Like, I didn't. I ain't fuck with it, you feel me? I quit after like a month. What was it? It was uh, Honey Grow. And what kind of job was that? Like, what was your position there? Um, I used to cook. I used to cook and shit. It's called walk. I used to be on the walk and shit, making food for the customers. Remember what age or what grade you were when you did that? I was about, what, 17? I think I was like, yeah, I was 17. Now, how did you get into rap music exactly? What you mean? Like, how did you get into that genre of music? Oh, I mean... Like, thinking back, growing up, do you we, remember... We from the hood, ain't like, we playing no fucking rock and roll type shit, you feel me? It just always, it's rap music. It's like, I grew up in Philly, so it's like, that's all you hear. You can just be walking to the store, somebody come past, like, drop past in the car, dumping, you feel me, Benny Seagull or anything, you feel me? So it's like, fuck it. Who taught you how to rap? How did you learn? I mean, nobody actually taught me. It was just like, some I picked up like from actually watching people like like artists is right like Lil Wayne, Eminem, all all that type shit, you feel me? Any musical influences um, back then? Back then? Yeah. Probably was like Meek, even like to this day, but yeah back then Meek because he was like somebody who was in my city who was actually coming up, you feel me? Like the hood, he was dropping mixtapes and the mixtape and I just see the whole wood the whole hood like really start Fucking with him, you feel me? So like, that was somebody who was actually in my area with the shit. So you've obviously met Meek. Yeah. You remember the first time you met him? Yeah, it wasn't even that long ago. When I was in LA, you feel me? He um at this time he already picked up on my music and shit. He uh, tweeted about me and all that cool shit. You feel me? So. He followed me on Instagram, and one time I was in L.A. and shit, I uh, asked him, can you pull up to some club? I forgot what it's called, you feel me? Because that was, he was, um, that was like my single release party in L.A., you feel me, on the West Coast, because my shit popped right now on the East Coast. So that's what he was trying to take over the West Coast with it now. And he said he just got to L.A., and he just hit the stool. So he just told me to slide to the stool, and I was done. I slid to the stool, you feel me? He was just chilling, mobbing and shit. I stayed through his whole session. Me. Just talking and shit. Have you had a chance to collab with him yet? No. What would that sound like? What? You and him together on a song. That should it be hot? Should it be hot? It's like that Philly sound. Feel me? On a new way type drum. If you were to to collab with him, mm -hmm. is it something on your hard drive right now you have for him, or is it something you'd want to do from scratch? It don't even matter which one it on. It really don't matter. I got some shit that he can hop on, and I can make some shit he can hop on. You feel me? Would you want a hook from him? A verse? Or are you and him going back and forth on a verse? No matter how we do it. Honestly. Now, at this point, uh, you signed to Columbia Records. Mm -hmm. How many years before you signed were you considered a, a, a serious recording artist? Like, how long were you taking it serious, perfecting your craft before you actually decide to sign? I would say, like, um, <clears throat> I really started actually making, like, on some 
or this type, I just really started making moves probably like when I was 18. So just like a year, a year before, a year or two. So, and how does something like that happen? What do you mean? How do you get a record deal? I mean, you just got, I honestly don't know. Like far as my knowledge, you feel me, it's just like, it's about the way you, you move, like first, or boom, you, you take over whatever city you from, feel me, slowly start taking over other cities, and it's about the way you carry yourself, feel me, like how you how you carry it while you're doing it, you feel me, like, can't be too reckless and all that. Yeah, I watch the way you move. And uh, how did they reach out to you initially? Do you remember? No, I don't really remember like that. Matter of fact, Matter of fact, we was in New York. Like it was like a couple labels who was like fucking with me. They heard my shit, so we was just from me stopping by each label or whatever. Then we we bumped into Columbia. I think matter of fact, Columbia was the first record label we actually went to. Then we went to a lot of them after that. But it's like they just cut. They they stuck with me. Like it, like the shit they were just saying. It stuck with me. So like fuck it, we'll rock with them. And uh, do you remember uh, from initially meeting them, how long before you actually signed? Um, how long did that process take? I think it was about like two weeks. Probably about two weeks around there. Around that time, two weeks. Now, between you uh, taking it serious for, I guess, what, a year mm -hmm. or so, and then you actually signing a deal, uh, in that year where you were taking it serious, ever felt like quitting during that time? I mean, it been it been times that I was like, man, like I'm done with this shit, you feel me? But uh, like the people who was actually supporting me was telling me, no, like keep going, you feel me? So I was like, man, fuck it, like, fuck it. It's like people rocking with me, so fuck it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do this shit for them at least, or a try, you feel me? Was it just a thought about quitting, perhaps, or was there ever a time it was serious? You were really about to. No, hang it, was it, like, up. it was only one time I really thought about like stopping this shit, and I was like actually dead ass serious about it. You feel me? I was, I was on, I was on some shit like close. I was real close to being on some shit like nobody can't tell me nothing. I'm done with this shit. Fuck it. You feel me? You did have support to keep going with it. Did you ever have support to stop though? Did anyone ever say to you, maybe you should quit? Maybe you should. Maybe this isn't. For nobody you. never really told me. I don't think nobody would be bold to say that shit to nobody. For me, but it was people telling me like, just make this like, for me your 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 plan B type shit. Now, when you first started rapping, do you remember your actual first song? Um. I remember the first song I ever dropped. What was that called? It was uh, it was a remix of Beanie Siegel, Fill It In The Air. I did it for my uh, my brother who passed away. The same one that uh, was rapping previously to you? No, that was my that was my homie. Like the um my brother who passed away, he wasn't really like my blood brother, but it was like one of the uh, older males who I looked up to. Feel me? So I consider him my brother. Feel me? What was his name? His name was Sula. And uh, is that that song, the uh, the uh, the remix that mm -hmm. you did, is that something that people could hear right now if they wanted to? No. I deleted like a, a lot of my old songs because I was starting off fresh from. Me. Remember what your first recording studio setup looked like back then? Yeah, it was my homie Just Studio. And shit. It was in his crib, but he had like all the like professional equipment for me. Yeah, all the professional equipment. That's what we went down. Me and a couple of my homies went down there from we were just recording. When you're in the recording studio these days, mm -hmm. top three things you need in the top, studio. Top three things I need. I need some drink, some type of beverage. Okay. From me. I need uh, my phone, of course. Okay, one more. I don't really need it. I need my phone just to use it because now I freestyle. I don't really write, but um, I need a black and mild. A black and mild or some weed. A black and mild or some weed or 
No matter which one. Okay. I need to smoke something for me. Certain type of strain what of weed. Uh, I like loud shit. I don't fuck with nothing else, all that extra shit that people, you know, it ain't none of that shit for me. I'd rather get my weed from the hood, like my hood, because I know where the fuck is, is, is at, you feel me? I know where it been at, you feel me? Now, what does either do? What does a, a black and mild do for you in the studio? What does weed do for you in the studio? It's like, all right, we it helped my freestyling, like, it helped my freestyling, like, the time piece of it fast, because, like, like when you highs, like, the shit come to your mind quicker, for me. Like, uh, black and mild, for me, I just smoking, like, thinking. Like, I just, probably, I just need to smoke, like, you feel me, while I'm thinking. Feel me. Boom, y'all, like, all right, bet, hold on, all right, punch me in. I'll say some shit, for me. You ever do both at the, in the same session? A black and mild and weed, no, or is it one or the other? Like, fun fact, I stopped smoking weed for like five months. Like five months, and that whole five months is like, I used to like need weed to smoke when I was recording, like before all this shit. I don't smoke weed like that heavy no more, but I still feel me smoke here and there. Like to keep it a bean with you, I don't really need neither of them to record. Honestly, like just give me a water a Gatorade or something, and I'm in there, for me. What happened in those five months? What was the reasoning there? No, I just felt as I was, like, me, myself, I felt as though I was smoking too much. Mm. I was just, you know, like, I probably smoked, like, 20 L's a day. So I just, like, man, let me let me stop. But it's, like, it's a mind of a matter thing. I, I got enough strength to say, like, all right, let me put this down for a hot second, for me. Did you notice any difference in the music that you created? Between like, not smoking in those five months versus <coughs> when you did? Um, no. No, not at all. Like, it's like my music is my music. One thing I can say is like my music is um is maturing over time, but that's without anything from me. That's without weed. That's just me as a person. Like my music will mature. You mentioned water, you mentioned Gatorade, I think. Mm hmm Certain flavor of Gatorade. I like the lime green one. And certain brand of water? Um, anything with electrolytes in it. When it comes to the studio, craziest studio story, if you have one. Mm, crazy studio. You say, well, let me think real quick. Take your time. Um, craziest studio story, if you have one. I don't think I got one. I mean, there've been a lot of like, but that's majority of any like studio that I'm in with my homies. It's just like it's fun. We just be bad, like laughing and shit, joking around. But it wasn't no like crazy shit that ever happened while I was in the studio. Not yet. Not yet. Now, when it comes to your recording process, you mentioned it here. You freestyle yeah. and uh, punch in. Yeah. Like now, I do it. It's like it's like. Now I've been traveling, so it's like certain cities I'm in, it just put me in a different vibe, you feel me? It put me in a different vibe where I could just go in there, go ahead, run that shit. Like, especially if I fuck with the beat heavy and I feel so damn, I gotta do this shit right now because I wanna hurry up and do it so I can see how that shit sound. So, like, fuck it, we in there. You were writing at first. Yeah, I was writing. Mm -hmm. What led to the freestyle punching? Was it a certain turning point? No, it was just me traveling. Like, it first started when I uh, first went to LA. When I went to LA, it's like it put me in a like a different vibe. Like it was, I wasn't used to the environment, but it was like it was good. It wasn't like well, some shit like damn, I don't really like it. it was like no, I fuck with it. and I'm not used to it. For me, it just like everything is like every day out there, just sunny, nice. For me, like fuck, it. I grew up in the trenches, so it's like that shit's like man, fuck it. Like I'm in here. You feel me? Even like the studio, it's like yeah. And musically, your actual music that you created, do you notice any difference there when you were writing versus freestyle punching it? No. Mm -mm. When it comes to your uh, lyrics, mm -hmm. ever had help with your lyrics before? Fuck no. <laughs> no, I don't need nobody helping me with that shit. You feel me? I'll probably, like, the closest thing I do, like, of, like, 
as far as the help, I probably like I'm in a studio with one of my homies. I like, and I'm freestyling. I was tell him like, just give me a word, like one word. Like, you give me a word, bro. They say anything, and I just run off of that. Boom. So. Has anyone ever suggested to you? And when I say someone suggested, maybe somebody higher up, like management, record label rep, mm -hmm. advisor, consultant. Has anyone ever suggested to get help with your lyrics? Before? No. I mean, if you get, I see, like, if you get help with your lyrics, then it ain't your lyrics no more, you feel me? You made it in the game from shit that you actually rap, that you the one who, who like, made this shit. So if somebody else do that shit for you, it's like, why the fuck am I even here, feel me? Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, ever helped other rappers with their lyrics? No. Mm-mm. How honest are your lyrics? How honest am I like? 100%. Yeah. Now, when it comes to your recording process, do you record inside the mic booth or outside of it these days? What you mean? Like some artists I've seen, they'll record in the mic booth with the door closed, and some are recording like by their engineer outside of the booth. Oh no, I'm, I'm in the booth with it. Um, okay. And what about this? Some artists record sitting down, some record standing up. It's like, it depends on, like now I could, it don't matter which one, but like, I see like, it, it depends on what type of like vibe the song is. Like I just want some hyper shit, or I'm standing up, you feel me? Like if it's on like a little slower tempo type shit, all right, let me sit down, take my time with it. I see. From start to finish, these days, what's the average length of time you spend creating a song? Creating a song? Yeah, how long does it take you? I mean, it really depends. Like, honestly, like sometimes it could go from 15, 20 minutes, but then it could go to an hour. Mm -hmm. You feel me? You're making a song. It depends on, like, how, how neat and well, like, do you want this song to be? Like, sometimes it's like, like I said, I freestyle now, so sometimes it'll just come to me like this, back to back. Sometimes it probably take a little longer, like, damn, like, what I'm going to say right here, for me, make the process a little longer, but. Now, because you do freestyle, I'm going to use this term loosely, writer's block, okay? That's a term when people are stuck on an idea, I get stuck that on a I mean, I feel as though every artist get that, no matter how, if you sing, write, like, you're going to get it, for me. How do you cope with that when that happens? I just, I take my time. It's like, it's no point of rushing. You got writer's block. It's like, if you try to rush that shit, it ain't gonna come out how you want it to. Like, so you gotta dwell on it then. What I wanna see next, boom, it'll just come to you. Ever just stop the song and just no. stop your place and just move on to the next? No, I'll finish the song. And ever got emotional creating a song before? Um, Probably about two songs. Two songs I did, because it was like on some shit. Like, when I first ever started rapping, like, it was just like I was on, like, specifically pain music. Like, I was making pain rap, you feel me? Now, I don't really, I don't do it like that. I make more, like, hyper music, get everybody energetic, you feel me? But, like, I think I made, like, two songs recently. That's, um, for me, heartfelt songs, and it's like, damn, like, I look back at it, like, yeah, this shit, this shit gonna hit the hood, you feel me? Do you yourself shed a tear creating this music? Mm -hmm. These two songs? I don't like I don't shed a tear making this song, but like probably when I hear it back, I probably you feel me, drop a couple of tears for my homies and shit. What were these songs called? Um, they not released. Oh. Okay. They're not released. Any plans on releasing it maybe in the future or Yeah, I'm I'm releasing them for sure. I'm okay. releasing all my music. Just haven't yet. Mm-hmm. But when you did make those songs, um, they never got to a point where you became too emotional and you couldn't finish creating those songs. No, like I said, I never actually got emotional making the song, so I'll make the song oh, okay. fully. Then I'll hear it back when it's complete. Like, damn, like, yeah, this is um, this, that for me. Got you. Sorry, I had a, a brain freeze there. Right. All right, let me ask you this. When it comes to the actual beats now, mm -hmm. do you prefer a producer creating a beat for you from scratch, or are you the type that likes to go through a beat? No, folder? like I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, um, 
me and a couple of producers like sat down to me a beat from scratch, but that's just because of the fact like what type of like vibe I wanted to actually make the song. Like I wanted a specific vibe, but majority of the time I just flip through the beats for me and I find out which one I fuck with. I just go in there and do it. Ever passed on a beat and it became bigger for somebody else at another given point in time? No, not yet at least, but no. Risk versus reward. What's the biggest risk you took for your music career so far? Um, uh, at least I'm trying to think. I really ain't take no like crazy risk. Like, uh, I don't, I don't feel as though I took any risk. Like, I mean, I took a risk to get here, for me, and that was like beating the hood, like being the trenches, for me. But that's anybody who like made it out of a hood, but I ain't really take no risk while I'm in it. What about signing a record deal, signing to a major label? Was that a risk for you in some sort of sense or no? I mean, I don't feel as though it is for me because at the end of the day, it's like you changing your life for the better. So it's like, no. Proudest accomplishment so far in your music career um, at this point? Like taking over my city. Taking over my city. That'd be the, like the, the the most major one. How long did that take you to do that? Four months after I dropped my record. And how does somebody take over their city? It's like you just gotta get everybody to vibe. Like I feel as though me personally, if you got the women and the children, you you, you got it. For me, if you take over, for me, that's how you take over your city. Was it uh, uh, radio airplay in those four months? I mean, I mean, the radio stations picked up on it, but it was like, actually, it was just from me being me. Like, it was like from me actually making the song, like doing a dance with it. It was like, it, it, it caught everybody, like, attention from me. And what song was this called? Flexing and Flashing. So, radio uh, piggybacked off of it after it was already moving. Mm -hmm. Just curious. Now, what about this? Uh, what do you think's the single best thing you've done for your career so far? The single best thing I've done? Yeah. For my you, career? Yeah. That you've personally done. Um, I know your proudest accomplishment was taking over the city, but right. what's the best thing you, you've done for yourself, for your career? Um, I'm trying to think, but I'll say actually traveling like actually traveling like i was staying still like and i was in the city for a long time so me actually traveling i'm seeing more shit that i'm never i never saw before i'm not used to feel me like it, it even make you rap about more shit feel me so now on the opposite end of the spectrum here i asked you what your uh, biggest accomplishment so far was in your music career mm -hmm. what's been your biggest failure so far in your music career? Um, I ain't having none. Hopefully I don't get none. From... Okay, what about this? Biggest mistake you may have made in your music career? I ain't make no mistakes. It's good. Um, All right, I want to ask you a few questions about yourself now. Mm -hmm. What is the biggest misconception of you? What's one thing people think about Sim Santana that's not true. Um, I mean, I don't really think it's nothing that they think about me that ain't true because I actually try to make, I try to make it like a bit of a personal relationship between me and my fans so they really know everything about me. So it's like, feel me, if somebody sees something about me that ain't true, nine times out of ten, it ain't something that everybody knows is trying, it's just something that a motherfucker make up who's just trying to get clout or anything, but I'd be 100% with my family. Like, uh, I'd be 100 with them all the time. So, like, they know me in a way, for me. And speaking of that, what's the craziest rumor you heard about yourself? I ain't heard no rumors about myself. It's good. Very good. What about this? Is there a question you get asked you hate to answer? Seems to be the same question you receive 
over and over again. Uh, one, one thing I do eat, if like, or one of my fans see me out in, in public, I'm at the mall or something, and they ask me, "Yo, hey, can you do the dance?" <laughs> like all that, that shit irked me a little bit in a way. I go lie because it felt like I'm out here doing me. I mean, I can see if you said take a picture. Yeah, you know what I mean, I love taking pictures with my fans. And shit, but like actually doing the dance and just like, huh? From have you ever done that? Have you ever done the dance on request? I mean, yeah, I, I be doing it sometimes. It's just the fact that like I just want to see like them happy, but in the way like, come on, now I'm out here. You want me to just be dancing? For me. And that's to the uh, the flexing song. Yeah, flexing the flesh. How did that dance actually happen? Um, me and my homies was doing this dance for like a couple years now. At the time, I remember me and my uh, my homie Sloan made this track. We made this track. We never dropped it though. And it was like I remember uh, we used to do like the dance, but a different version of it. For me, so I just kind of switched it up a little bit. They like, yo, damn, that shit hot. You feel me? So I just ran with that shit. What's the craziest reaction you've seen to that dance? Um, and when I say craziest reaction, you know, other people try to emulate the dance, do the dance themselves, maybe on on the online, uh -huh, on uh, social media. What's the craziest reaction or interesting reaction? I mean, I saw seen? like a couple videos. Like it wasn't just one. I saw like. Multiple videos of like somebody recording their grandma when their grandpa tried to do the dance. That should be funny as shit to me. And babies too. Like when babies like they actually move the whole joint. Matter of fact, it was like uh, this is video. It wasn't. It wasn't really like the dance, but that shit had me in tears because it's like a baby. It could like the baby could be no older than one, and they hit that dance the world like right on beat. That shit had me dying. That shit had me in tears. Do you have any kids yourself at this point? No. Just curious. No. I love the kids, though. I don't have any. Now, what about this? Do you care what people think of you? I mean, if you don't know me, I, I don't give a fuck. For me. Have you always been like this? Or did yeah. you care at one point about other people's opinions that you I didn't I never know? cared about nobody else's opinion. It, it don't matter to me. What do your opinion mean to me? Or it means to anybody else, feel me? Some people care. I mean, some people care, but uh, in my opinion, I, I feel as though people shouldn't care at all. Like, at the end of the day, if they don't know you, like, why would you care how this motherfucker think of you, feel me? What about music-wise? Do you care what people think about your actual music? Not you, personally, mm -hmm. but your music. No, I don't care because I mean, this million people plus this thousand people, these, all these, these million people, they fuck with my uh, music, like, to the highest point ever. And these group of people just think my music ass or whatever they want to think. I mean, majority rules. I don't give a fuck what y'all say. This is a thousand to a million people. Like, y'all, if y'all stand in the crowd hating, and they stand in the crowd loving me, that shit gonna be way more, you feel me? I don't care, you feel me? What are your keys to success? What are some things that make you successful at this point? Um, and it doesn't have to be musically, this could just be in life. What are some things that make you as a person successful? Just, just rock, like, with yourself before, like, anything, you feel me? Like, you gotta have, like, you gotta get yourself, like, self-motivation. You feel what I'm saying? Like, if you on your team, then it don't matter who else is, for real, for real. Like, I mean, if they is, then that's a plus, but if they all against you, long as you got yourself, you cool. That's how I see it, feel me?